While we have MATLAB open, let me go ahead and, and give you a few more tips about, about how to um, do plotting and things like that in MATLAB. So if you go back to your um, PowerPoint presentation, uh, you can use this slide for, for some notes, note taking if you'd like. Um, but again, I will post the, the script of our MATLAB session to help you. So let's go ahead and generate a vector representing time. So if I go, if I generate something like this, um, what this is going to do is it's going to generate um, an array from 0 to 4 in steps of 1. So it'll generate a, an array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here I want to create um, a vector representing time and I'm going to go from 0 to 2 seconds and I'm going to go in steps of 0 0.01 seconds. Um, this array will be quite large. Um, if I just hit enter right now it will output the whole thing to the workspace. Um, but I don't need to do that so I'm going to um, put a semicolon following that to inhibit the, the return. And so now it's stored all of that. It's created this array T as you can see over here in the workspace, but it didn't actually um, output it in the command window. So it goes from 0 to 2 in steps of point 0.1. So it'll go 0 will be the first element of t, point 0.1 will be the second element, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, and so on. I now want to create a function that's basically um, basically the solution of the differential equation we found earlier. So we had a constant 6.1538 multiplying a decaying exponential, if you recall. The way that we write an exponential, uh, or the natural number e, is with the, the MATLAB function exp. And its denominator, or its, its exponent, was minus 3 times t, where we again use the asterisk for multiplication. We then had a term for a cosine with a coefficient of negative 0 0.1538, cosine of 2t. And then we had a, co a coefficient of 0 0.2307 multiplying the sine term. Again, I will put the semicolon, but this, this x will have the same number of elements as t, where um, it's basically evaluated at, at all 201 values of t that have been defined. So over here I can see I've created um, a vector of values for x. I can then plot these using the plot command where I give it the first element is uh, the horizontal axis, the second element corresponds to the vertical axis. And you can get, you can see what we get. We have this decaying exponential. Um, and there's also, if we kept going, you would see, uh, see the sinusoidal portion of it. Let me now create another function that's a decaying sinusoid. So this is something that we saw as many uh, physical systems have response like this. So I'll have, let's say, the same constant, 6.1538, have the same decaying exponential. But then I'm going to multiply it by a sine wave. Let's say that the sine wave has a frequency of 15 radians per second. If I, when I hit enter, I'm going to get an error. And the reason that I get an error is because this exponential is essentially an array of 200 elements. And this sine also is an array of 200 elements, where each element of the array is that sine function evaluated at the different values of t. 
So the first element is the value um, when t is 0. The second element is the value when t is 0.1. The third element is when the when t is 0 0.2, and so on. And so if you're multiplying two arrays, um, MATLAB is presuming that you want to do matrix multiplication. And so a 1 by n array cannot be multiplied by a 1 by n array. Uh, ma the matrix multiplication won't work. In that case, really what you're intending to do is to multiply a row by a column. In this case, however, we don't want to do ma ma matrix multiplication. We want to multiply element by element. We want to multiply um, the exponent when t is equal to 0 times the sine wave when t is equal to 0. That'll be our first element. Then we want to do the multiplication when t is 0.1 and t is 0.1 and so on. And so the way that you represent element by element operations is to add a period before the asterisk. So dot asterisk means element by element multiplication. Again, I'll put the semicolon to inhibit the, the returning of the output to the command line. Now I will plot the two functions on top of each other. So I'll plot um, my first function versus t, and I will plot my second first function versus t. By doing that, um, by giving it uh, four elements, it will presume that the first two are uh, an x and y uh, pair, and the second two are also an x and y pair. And if I plot them, you'll see the two graphs, and it'll by default choose, uh, choose the line type. But I can change the line type if I'd like. I can specify that the second function be in red, and instead of being a solid line, it could be a dash line. I can also um, add a title. So whatever I want it to be. I could also add a legend to identify which function each of the lines go go with. So the first function that I gave it was the x function. The second function I gave it was the y function. I can also label the axes using x label for the y label, or for the horizontal label and y label for the vertical. Going back and looking, you can see all of the different elements that we've added to our to our figure. In general, quite a lot of what we'll do in this class will require plotting. So um, these basic functions are something that that um, you would you should try to become familiar with.